Log Talk Radio. All aboard. The Clio Exchange Express is leaving the station. Welcome to the Clio Exchange Express, a conversation about the past, present, and future. A lively discussion between friends, family, pundits, personalities, and potentates, if necessary, in order to teach and learn something new. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the hour. Let's go to the show already in progress. Well, hi there. Welcome on board the Clio Exchange Express. I'm Lou Phillips, one of your host conductors for the day, and we're heading out on another life journey, a journey that will educate, inform, and inspire. And as usual, once again, I'm joined by my co-conductors, George Chandler in London, and uh, we're welcoming back Rudy Rollins in Las Vegas. Hey, George, what's going on over there, brother? Well, hello, uh, Lou. Everything is fine in London. I can tell you for sure that winter has arrived. Oh, it's there. <laughs> it's here, it's here, and I'm wearing my, my big coat. <laughs> uh-oh, uh-oh. You don't have any long johns. What do they call them over there, long gems maybe? No, I think they call them long johns as well. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, oh. not, I'm, not, uh, I'm not wearing the long johns just yet, but the okay. weather has changed, especially first thing in the morning. Okay. You know, seven, eight o'clock in the morning, well, it's cold out there. Right, Listen, right, right. I've been uh-huh. looking around trying to find, trying to find uh, our other co-host, Rudy. I, I I don't know where he is or uh, 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 what what the story is. Uh oh. Hey, 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 hey! I'm back. I must apologize for my little <laughs> short disappearance, but I'm back, and I hope George is there. Lou, yes, you I'm there? Here. I hope you're ready for the ride, man, because I'm back. I'm Let's get it Welcome on. Welcome back. Welcome yes, back. Yes, sir. So, well, listen. So, I, yes, sir. I got a little little, uh, little comedy here, if anybody's interested. Okay. <laughs> listen, I'll start off by asking a question. What do you call cheese that isn't yours? Cheese that isn't mine. Hmm, Rudy, you got any yeah. idea? No, that was beyond me, man. What do you call cheese up? that isn't yours? Yeah. Nacho cheese. <laughs> <laughs> hey, George, I think I think you I think you earned one. All right. <laughs> hey, look here. I, part part my interruption, but could I could I try my hand on this man? Now, uh, you ahead. can, but, Ru- but Rudy, you need to know. I also have a boo ometer too. Uh, okay, well, let's see. Let, let's see what happens. All right. Okay, if two wrongs don't make a right, what do two rights make? Hmm. I don't know. What do two rights make? An airplane. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see. Right, bro. Okay. All right. All right. All right. No, no, good. Good. <laughs> Well, well, listen, I, I have a lightweight one. We'll just, uh, I'll just see if I can roll with that. What has four fingers and a thumb but not, but is not living? Four fingers what has and four a thumb. fingers and a thumb but is not living? Uh, I don't know. You got me on that one. A glove. Woo-wee. <laughs> 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 oh, Boy, well, I tell you, listen, we, we all have to admit we're getting a little closer to where we might be able to take the comedy show on the road. Don't you think so? Uh, well, not yeah, just yeah. Yeah. Not, not yet. Not, yeah. <laughs> a little more tweaking to do. I, I see. Okay. Well, anyway, we're having a lot of fun with it at any rate, aren't we? Yes, and, and, that, and that's the important thing, as long as we're having a good time with it. So, I tell you what. Let's move a little closer to welcoming our special guest uh, for this journey. But before we do that, I'd like to remind our listening audience 
that we'd like for you to participate in the discussion as well. And so beginning at 7.25 p.m., you'll be able to call in and join in the conversation. You can do so by calling 646-716-7070. Or you can call our toll-free number at 855-414-6521. Again, you can join the conversation at 725 by calling 646-716-7070 or 855-414-6521. Now, Rudy, since you've been uh, sort of away from us for a while, t- let us know what's going on. You, I think before you left, you talked about being getting a new designation of LVIN or something like that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's That was a title they've given uh had given me out here, and I'm um, very proud of that, man. That's what kept me quite busy. But like I say, I'm back, man, and uh, it, it, and it's it's really a pleasure to be back on the board, back on board, and um, living. And it, it actually, was the, the, the abbreviation is living very nice in Vegas. You know, I mean, that's 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 the uh, Las Vegas. Now I forgot, I missed it all up. But anyway, living it's just nice uh, in Vegas. yeah, living nice in Vegas, man. Well, that's been great. Good to me. But, but I miss the Clio Express, man. I'm excited about our new guest because uh, a lot I want to hear from him, and I'm quite sure the audience will be here, so let's get it on. Yes, indeed. Yes, yeah. indeed. Well, listen, uh, uh, you're coming back at a at a perfect time because we, we are uh, coming out of November and uh, being very thankful for uh, mm-hmm. all that we've been able to receive, and we're, we're about to move into uh, a new era where – where we'll be able to uh, to also uh, provide another honor, provide another focus area that is important not only in, uh, I think, in each of our lives, but uh, mm-hmm. important uh, as it relates to the world. And so let me just play a uh, short commercial of what we're going to be focusing on in terms of the Clio Exchange Express in December. Have a listen. December is a month that brings focus onto the most appealing figure in human history. The world of Christendom directed its attention to a small town called Bethlehem and acknowledged the gift that God delivered to mankind. Unfortunately, for nearly as long, there has been a significant commercialization of the season, and it has been replaced with a sort of worship of buying gifts to receive the favor of others. Well, we want to give you the truth through a discussion with Reverend Jeffrey Johnson of Mount Calvary Baptist Church in Fairfax, Virginia. So join the conversation throughout the month of December right here on the Clio Exchange Express on blogtalkradio.com. And I think that's going to be a really wonderful discussion that we're going to have. How about you, George? I'm looking forward to it, Lou. I'm really looking forward to it. Beautiful, beautiful. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, joining us on this journey is uh, is an individual that we need to get focused on for right now. And this is an individual whose musical contributions go back to the mid-50s when he was a youngster developing his skills in his native Pittsburgh and later on in Chicago. He was a member of one of the greatest male singing groups of all times, I'm told, and he's still making great music. In fact, now in his, uh, I believe, about his 81st year of life, we're pleased right now to premiere something that he's provided to us as uh, his latest project, which, which is a 50s-style release, and we're going to uh, play it first time in the U.S., right here on the Clio Exchange Express. So have a short listen to a sampling of Did I Tell You?
Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome on board the Clio Exchange Express, a, a giant as far as I'm concerned in R&B history, Mr. Tommy Hunt. I'm here welcome with on you. board. <laughs> Thank you very much for having me. Well, it's just a thrill for us to uh, to be able to uh, to be in your presence, whether it's over the radio well, or otherwise. Well, Lou, it's a thrill for me to be remembered. That I think it's fantastic it's, that there's still people like yourself, you know what I mean, giving us older guys a break. It's yes, really sir. wonderful. Yes, Thank you. Indeed, indeed. I also want to let you know that I'm joined by a couple of other fellows who are uh, are also bowing and scraping uh, before you right now, and that's uh, <laughs> yeah. George Chandler in London and Rudy Rollins over in Las Vegas. Oh, what? Hello, Mr. Hunt. How My you name doing, is Tommy? Hello there. How you doing? I'm doing Wonderful. fine. This is George from London. From London? That's right. Oh, you're from London. Hi. Oh, well, I guess we're neighbors right. then. Yes, you That's are. Right. Yes, you are. <laughs> yeah, because I'm, I'm living up in the north of England. Yes, I know. I know somebody so who it, knows you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> small world, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you. You know, you, you know John Cheatham, don't you? Oh, yeah, definitely. Well, John Cheatham, if there's anybody I'm over here from this that's living over here from the states, I know them. I've, I've I've had the chance to meet them all, so I know where the brothers are. Well, that's great. Well, listen, I, I'm going to kind of get this uh, train moving in terms of questions because we've already got callers waiting to talk to you. And uh, oh, great! I, I, I'd like to get started by, uh, and we're going to come back and talk about your new project, but. Let's talk about your start in Pittsburgh. Now, Pittsburgh, back in the day, was a town that offered, that had tremendous musicians there, and it was a vibrant uh, black community uh, in that town. I mean, when you look at the history. You mean when I was a child? Yes, it was. was, Indeed. It was was an entertainer's town. It was a band's town. Well, a lot of big bands that uh, well came through there, like uh, Earl Hines and Billy Eckstein's band, and mm-hmm. all those guys like that. Yeah, so you know, it was a musical little town. That's that's correct. And uh, guys like Art Blakely grew up. Art Blakey grew oh, up. Oh yeah, there. Earl, yeah, quite a Earl few. Earl Garner, quite a few. Yes, sir. Indeed, yeah, I'm indeed. telling you, it brings back memories. So, so what was it about? the town that caused so many people to want to be in the music, in the entertainment business. Did did it affect you as well? Oh, definitely affected me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was singing, I was singing songs when I was about six years old. I was trying to put on shows for my mother's friends and, you know what I mean, be the (laughs) show off or the clown of the party and, right. oh yeah, it, 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 right away I, I fell in love with music and I said to Mm -hmm. myself, that uh, that's what I wanted to do for the rest of my life, and that's what I've done for all of my mm-hmm. life. I've never had another job but show business. How about that? That's beautiful. And I that's remember, uh, uh, I remember a, a great DJ there who was a woman mm-hmm. uh, who helped, who first helped me to get uh, some amateur shows. Her name was Mary D. Hmm. I don't know if you ever, do you, if you remember that name. I, I I don't. That was one. That was one of the first sisters. Okay. That had a had a had a show a, a radio show in Pittsburgh. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, uh, uh, George and Rudy, if you guys don't mind, I've got a caller who's been on the line now for almost nine minutes. I mean, they called in as soon as the, <laughs> the red light went uh, okay. on. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to bring right. them in right now and see what question they may have. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, caller, you're on the line. Could you give us your name and where you're calling from? Yes, my name is Bill Gaddis. I'm calling from uh, Palm Coast, Florida. But I I matured. Uh, most of my adult life was in Chicago. Yes, you did. And I remember I remember um, when they were signed by Chess Records. That's right. How about that? <laughs> yeah. And but you know what? I What's that? Uh, when. I remember the first record that you all came out with uh, 
uh, and my sister not made bad. me. When you were on Chance Records, remember Chance Records? Yeah, I remember Chance. Uh, what was on? Uh, if I can't, uh, if I can't have you. If I can't have you, that's right. And and yeah. golden teardrops. Golden <laughs> teardrops. My sisters yep. would get me up. In fact, that's why, that's how I learned to dance because when your records came on, those <laughs> those groovy records. God bless. My sisters God needed bless to learn how to brother. dance, so I was the I was their brother, and they needed a man, so they chose me. So I would yeah. get up, and they taught me how to dance. <laughs> so great. I grew up with your yeah, that, stuff, man. That was some serious yeah, that music was some back good in the old, day. That, that was some good. That was some good days. Some good days. I, I don't think that, that the music industry has changed a little bit since our time, but but I think this uh, you know there's some nice stuff coming out today, but I don't think it'll ever ever touch the stuff from our time because our, our music really truthfully relates to people. It sure does. You know, people that people people hear our music and and they either fall in love or they're falling out of love or divorcing or something <laughs> going on in with their life. But our music is like that. Well, you taught a lot of other artists how to do do wop and art because you all yes, your group were about the first people, first groups that started that kind of music, because I remember you listening to Randy Recordmark, because that's all we could listen to, one hour a day. That's right, that's right. Uh, yes, back and in the days we, of the Orioles and the Flamingos yeah. and uh, the Clovers and all the all the guys. So, so Bill, you God got a, got a question for Mr. Hunt? Yeah, I just I just wanted to know, I mean, they had a lot of changes. Uh, there were a lot of uh, group changes uh, mm -hmm. over the times. I remember when you all... Somebody went to war, went to the army. Army drafted some of your people. Then you had to bring other yeah, people in. So I'm just trying to figure out how difficult, how difficult, and was it for you all to keep that group going as as, as many people well, were when, when I got away. with them, a, a couple, the couple of the guys went into the service. Zeke and uh, Johnny went into the service, and I took Johnny's place. And um, uh -huh. what happened was when Johnny came out, I, well, I was only supposed to be with him two years, and then I was going to move on. But when Johnny came out, the group had progressed so much with new songs like I Only Have Eyes For You and stuff like that. Right. That uh, they wanted to keep the group together with me still in it. And Johnny went over to the Dells. Mm -hmm. Oh, and, okay. uh, that's how he got to yeah, the Yeah, so that's what happened. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, Johnny went to the Dells, and he and he just died a few, uh, well, I'd say about a year ago. That's mm -hmm. right. Wow. That's right. Wow. Yeah, well, I, I, well, everybody calls me when somebody's going, you know, died over, died at home to let me know, you know what I mean, who's who's still around and who's gone. Yeah, yeah. So those well, new records, which that you makes can... me feel good. Huh? This new release that you came out with, I'm 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 interested to know uh, something about that. Would you not, talk a little bit about? That's, what, hey, Bill, that's not hey, me okay. singing. Yeah, that's not me singing. And and and, and okay. we're we're gonna singing. we're gonna get to that just a little bit later. Yeah. Oh, okay. And, okay. All right. Well, so, this, by the way, fellas, I want to say hi to Dr. George and uh, my Las Vegas friend uh, Rudy, and also to Leroy? my host Lou. Beautiful. How you doing, beautiful. fellas? Good, Doing man. great, and, and just by the way, a full disclosure: Bill is uh, is one of the crew. We are all we all go back to uh, the days in Italy when we were there in the in the uh, late sixties, I guess, and uh, yeah. and we're also yeah. performing, uh, Tommy. Just so just so you know, and Bill, I thank you so much for calling us, and I'm going to put you. Uh, into an area where you can keep listening to the show, and uh, well, and I'm going to bring George back in. I'm going to bring George back in as well. He dropped off there for a moment, and uh, and I know George is coming back with a with a key question for you, Mr. Hunt. George, are you there? Yes, yeah. I am here. Uh, I, I, I'm very interested to know. Uh, I understand, uh, Tommy, that you joined the Flamingos around 1957, 1958. Is that correct? That's right. That's right. And how, I, how, how did I how did I get in the in, how did I get involved with the flamingos? Yes, yes. How did you well, get involved? Well, what happened was I had my own little group at the time called the Echoes. Right. And we were just working locally around some of the little, little clubs and uh, 
pubs and stuff. We didn't call them pubs, but the little clubs. And uh, um, Zeke and Jake of the Flamingos walked in one night and saw me dancing, and because uh, I was the dancer in the group, and um, they approached me. And it was at the time that the, him and Johnny was going into the service, and they were looking for a replacement. So they asked me, would would I be willing to join them? And naturally, at that time, you know, the Flamingos to me were a great group, and they were national. They were national. So I said, of course, I'll join you. And I went back and told my group that they asked me to go. And my group put said, go, Tommy, because it'd be good for you. And if you, if it's good for you, I know somewhere down the way you'll make it good for us. So uh, I said, well, I will. And that's how I got involved with the Flamingos. Oh, that's a fantastic. Mm-hmm. Also, I yeah, it, was a, it, it, was, it was a dream come true for me. Is that right? Was, I didn't believe it. I thought the guys, when they asked me that, I thought they were just pulling my leg. I said, look, I said, you guys, I said, I know you're the Flamingos because I've seen you on stage. Right. Mm-hmm. I, said, but you're not, I said, you're not looking for nobody. You're just pulling my leg. They said, no, no, we're going into the service, a couple of us, and we need some replacements, and we like what you do. Hmm. So I said, great, and uh, and that's how it happened. It's a let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I said, yeah. I said, I said, have bag uh, ready. To, I said, have bag. We'll travel. I'm ready. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I said, all you got to do is give me some wheels, and I'm ready. Yeah. Well, I, I, I can kind like of relate to, to that. Yeah, I'd like to ask you another question. One of the songs that uh, uh, you recorded, and I think you sung the lead on, was a song called "Nobody Loves Me Like You," a song written by Sam Cooke. How did that uh, come yeah, No, I, di- I didn't sing the lead on that. Nate sang the lead on that one. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, Nate. Yeah, because um, I'm singing with a well, little I'm, Spanish I'm, group now yeah, from out of Barcelona who loves the Flamingos music, and that's the first one they asked me. They said, "Would you? Would you? Do you know nobody loves me like you do?" And I said, "Yeah, of course." So I've been singing that in uh, their group, you know, helping this little Spanish group. And it's like a lot of people are saying, you guys sound like the Flamingos. I said, well, we're trying to sound like the Flamingos. I said, (laughs) but the guys are the closest to the Flamingos that I've heard any other group who tried to imitate the Flamingos. These guys Mm -hmm. sound just like them. Yeah, that's beautiful. I closed my eyes. I thought it was the I thought it was the old guys back with me. (laughs) Wow, they were that close. I I did. I, I got nervous. I said, no. I said. I said, how did these guys get back here? I said, the Lord didn't let them come out of heaven. I said, I said Jesus Christ. But these guys are so good. Mm. And I'm going to send you a copy. Of that, that record I sent you is just a demo that I'm, I'm trying out because I never wrote songs before. But we'll okay. talk about that later. Yes, sir. Okay, but very I good. Rudy, to I... tell you something. Okay, well, let's right. tell you something to put you straight. All right, sir. Well, I think Rudy is anxious to ask a question as well. Go ahead, Rudy. Yeah. You, you, Go ahead, Rudy. Uh, Mr. Hunt, I, I started singing when I was 12 years old, and there was three yeah, groups right. that I was very fond of. I mean, I like the Orioles and the Penguins, but it was the Moon Glows, right. the Flamingos, and the Spaniels. Well, the Moon right. Glows taught me, taught me the harmony. I love their harmony, and we couldn't get a bass right now. Hey, Rudy. Rudy, did you remember that song, uh, um, Ten Commandments of Love? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, with Marvin well, Gaye on it. No, 12, yeah, 12 months ago, he was Marvin Gaye. But my question to you was, this was this was a debate amongst us. It was said that it, all, it was six feet harmony because nobody, no group, had, like, like you just said, I had, I had no one ever even come close except for a group out of New Jersey called the Escorts. It was uh, an when they them. came out, and they did your, uh, one, one of your songs. But, the, but my point, my question was, was it six piece harmony, or was it the story yes. that something about your religious beliefs that y'all had Jewish and you and you sung because you had a, a different harmonics in your voice, which made the flamenco harmony? What was it that 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 made that harmony like it was? Cause it's, well, it's so when, when I got with them, the guys were singing that harmony like that when I first got with them. And I said to them myself that I'd never heard the type of harmony they were doing mm-hmm. because 
most of the groups in those days were singing the run of the mill harmony. Everybody right. was doing the same type of thing. Mm-hmm. And when I heard the flamingos, I said, your harmonies are so different. I said, what is it? And they just said that, uh, Zeke said, we concentrate on different type of notes than the, the average group. We we like to, uh, 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 what was that word you use? He, he said, like, um, experiment with notes. Mm-hmm. I said, well, you really got your own individual sound. I said, because I never heard harmony like that before. Yeah. And, uh, well, when we had only have eyes for you, I didn't think the guys could do it, but uh, they found this harmony and that little that little gimmick do up show up that they did behind it. I yeah, said, right. Yeah, yeah. These guys are amazing. <laughs> they were amazing. Yeah, they that's just, wonderful. You know, well, so what but the only thing, thing you know, friend? all the groups had. Go ahead, I'm sorry. No, just so what, what, what were you? Were you a tenor or uh, what was your note? I was second, ten- I was second tenor. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. Well, I tell you what, guys, this, yeah, is a, this is a this is a wonderful discussion, and uh, and we're obviously anxious to get deeper into your life and learn more about you, uh, Mr. Well, Hunt, I would but, like to meet you guys. You know what I mean? I, because you know, it's so nice when you meet somebody uh, in your lifetime that remembers the old days and remembers things like this. I mean, and and I just feel like uh, it's such a shame that. It's not. It's it's just only a telephone conversation. I would love to do it face to face. Well, I, I can tell you, we we we've been known to come to London more than once. So uh, you oh, yeah. you may wake up one day and get a phone call, and we're right in the corner. <laughs> I'm but, but I tell you, Lou. All right, all right. But before we get uh, a little too much further, we also, as part of the Clio Exchange Express, uh, we also yeah. take side tours to visit some of the old underground railroad locations. And so right. right now, if we can just hold off for just a second, we're going to take a quick little tour, and we'll be right back, oh, ladies and gentlemen. You Stay with no us. No problem. What? Clio Exchange Express and the Underground Railroad Tour is leaving the station. Next up, Washington, Pennsylvania, and the F. Julius Lamone House. The Lamone House was built in 1812 and was a center of anti-slavery activity in southwestern Pennsylvania from 1830s through the end of slavery. Dr. F. Julius Lamone was the son of a Parisian doctor who immigrated to the United States. Dr. Lamone was born in Washington and studied medicine at the Jefferson Medical College in Philadelphia. In 1834, Dr. Lamone joined the Washington Anti-Slavery Society and was the organization's president from 1835 to 1837. Along with his children and wife, Madeline, they were active in the Underground Railroad. The tightly knit free black communities in southwest Pennsylvania helped slaves escape and developed an operational network with white anti-slavery activists such as Lamone. In his activism and philosophy, Lamone represented the mainstream of anti-slavery activity in the United States before 1850. It was typical of the middle-class Americans of the antebellum period who became caught up in the anti-slavery debate. The F. Julius Lamone House is located in Washington, Pennsylvania, at 49 East Maiden Street. It's open to the public for guided tours. Okay, we're back now, and uh, and uh, Mr. Hunter, I apologize for interrupting. Well, thank no, you so much. It. That was very interesting. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, we try to uh, acknowledge the contributions, uh, significant contributions that laid the groundwork for what we are all doing today and benefiting from, and uh, stopping well, at that's, various that's... places along the Underground Railroad is our way of doing that. Now, your first group was the Five Echoes, right? Echoes, right. How, how did that group get started? Uh, we we were just a bunch of kids uh, from um, around the neighborhood, and uh, I, I met a couple of the guys uh, one day. Uh, my mother had a little uh, uh, chili restaurant, and uh, they would come in, and, and we got to talking, and and uh, we was talking about music and and at the time, you know what I mean, because of all the, the groups that were coming out, you know what I mean, we decided that maybe we could do that 
so we started singing a little song together, and uh, the harmony seemed to fit pretty pretty good. So we started rehearsing a few times a week, and uh, and see what how, how far we could go. And mm-hmm. for me, I'm the only one that got the break, you know. But the other guys went on. Okay. To uh, okay. And uh, the the one the guy that took my place in the echoes was uh, a a guy that you're very familiar with. Uh, um, oh, uh, what is uh, who's making love to my your old lady oh, while little I'm Johnny out Taylor. Taylor. love? Johnny Taylor. Taylor. Who's that? Johnny Taylor. Johnny Taylor. Is that Johnny Taylor? Yes. Yes. Yeah, well, that's, wow. yeah, that's who took that's who took my place when I oh. went with the flamingos. He took my place in the echoes. How about that? Mm-hmm. My goodness, ain't that something? Yes, sir. And that was a singing little dude. Yes, sir. <laughs> singing yes, sir. little dude. Boy, I'm telling yes. you. Yes. But I loved oh. all the guys that could sing. I, I I never had you know you know some guys get a little bit envious of other guys you know but. I think, you know, if you got talent, you know what I mean, you should people should give you credit for it, you know what I mean? Don't get angry because you're a better singer. Mm-hmm. You know, some people got the voices and some people don't. Yeah. You know, yeah. you just you just enjoy the music. That's, that's, all that's you right. Do. Enjoy the music, don't get mad, but you had a lot I had a lot of uh, ups and downs in the business with a certain artist, you know what I mean, which Okay. It's just a waste of time to even talk about it. Sure, sure. But you know what I mean? The the, the artists that I had trouble with now are all gone. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to condemn their graves. Right, right, Mm -hmm. right. Well, and and, and of course, that that whole business is a a highly competitive business. Oh, yes, definitely. Even though you don't. I know it. Yeah. But Even I feel, though I feel, you know, Lou, Lou, I feel like this. You're, 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 an, you're a radio announcer. Mm-hmm. There are announcers out there that's better than you, and you're better than some of the announcers out there. Yeah, that's right. You just, right. you got a gift. Just enjoy your gift. That's right. That's right. That's right. Just enjoy and, and, you, and you, and you come through all right. You know, people that start worrying about whatever the people say about them, mm-hmm. they never live their life. They don't yeah. live their life. That's that's exactly right. Because now, speaking they're, of, they're so worried and upset about well, what people think of them. Yeah. It's what you think of yourself first. That's most important. Indeed. Indeed. Now, now just, uh, just thinking about uh, this talent, uh, it, it, it had to be, you had to be confident about who you were or who you are and the gifts that God had given you to uproot yourself from the U.S. and move to to Europe, what what drove that decision? Well, what what drove that was that, that I came over here when I had human, and I was working for the army bases in Germany. And the guy who was an Australian, uh, he was the booker, and he said to me, he said, if you ever want somebody to look at your business in Europe, he said, I, I'd love to do it for you. I said, well, that's that's nice of you. And so what happened was um, I was on Scepter One label in New York with the mm-hmm. Shirelles and Chuck Jackson and Dion Warwick and the Isley Brothers and B.J. Thomas. And um, what happened was when I first went to the, the, the label, uh, they, they already had the Shirelles and Chuck and me and Dion came in later. Mm-hmm. But the woman that owned the company, Florence Greenberg, oh, yeah. when I walked into her office, because her PR man is the one that uh, asked me to be with the company, and when I walked into her office, she didn't say hello to me at all. What she said was, we don't need any more uh, uh, a singer, a male singers. Wow! She didn't even ask me what my name was. She that was your greeting. The guy, we don't need any, we don't need any more male singers. Hmm. But the guy who took me in, him and her had a little thing going on under the table. You mean so like an he affair? Could, he, could, he could get away with a lot of stuff. 
Oh, okay. And he told he told her, said, well, I want him on the label. Hmm. And uh, she said, well, it's up to you. It's your baby. If you want him on the label, then go ahead and take him and put him on the label. Hmm. So uh, that I had that in me, which taught me later in life, you know what I mean? I should have just not let that worry me, but I did let it worry me because I had just left the flamingos and I was out on my own. I was going to—I didn't know which way I was going. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So uh, uh, we had human, and uh, she got a little bit friendly, but not too friendly. And well, then after was... that, what happened? Yeah, what after that? They given me songs that were no good for me. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, uh, Any day now that Chuck had was my song. You know, I, I had, can hear uh, you singing that. Yeah, yeah I, that was that was my song, but they gave she gave it to Chuck, okay. and I didn't mind her giving it to Chuck because I didn't know that the guy wrote it for me. Okay, okay. he never told me. Huh? But that's okay. You know, I said to him, I said that's all right. You know, I never let none of that bother me, to a point where I couldn't do my job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so I just just. Took what I could get and uh, tried to make the best of it, hmm. and it just got to a point where uh, I could see where I wasn't going to get any happiness out of the record scene, not through Scepter One Records. Mm-hmm. And I just decided. I said, I remember this guy telling me that, so I said, I'm going to try my luck overseas. And I didn't come over here to live. I came over here to try and make it. Okay. okay. But what happened was. <laughs> My name got bigger over here than it was at home. That's wonderful. That's and not wonderful. only here, but across the world. I've been around the world. Yeah, yeah, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. You know, as you were telling that story, it reminded me of uh, of a piece of advice I got from an old preacher uncle. He, he, he used to tell me, he said, son, whenever you're in a situation and it looks like everybody is, is working against you. Uh, against you. Against you. Put on your hat, yeah. Rev up the crowd and leave in advance and turn it into a parade because <laughs> you, <laughs> well, you, you don't want it to be a possession. <laughs> that's, good. that's true. That's true. And and it yeah. sounds like that's what you did because you got over to Europe and 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 I discovered something and I think George, you and I were talking about this that there's a a whole genre of music created under this umbrella called the Northern Soul. Northern uh, Soul. Yes, that's sir. Right. That's right. That's a, that, that's a totally uh, British phenomenon. It happened, it, it started it, it about is. 19... I think it's, I think it's in an ident- identity kit for uh, the Northern people. Mm. They wanted something that belonged to them, a music that belonged to them, because at the time you had so many different Types of music, garage, punk, uh, all kind of different names. So they picked Northern Soul, and now Northern Soul is big all over the world. Hmm. Mm. Did, did you know that it, it's in I Japan? It's in Australia. It's in Africa. It's everywhere. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's everywhere. So there's a possibility. Well, I'm hoping that you know we can get a little bit of that music back. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. because a lot of the kids, a lot of the kids today are really going out of their minds. You know what I mean? With with no with no uh, discipline, right? And right. and music has a lot to do with discipline. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, surprised how, you'd be surprised how much how important music Tommy? is to our everyday living. Yeah, hmm. that's true. Tommy, that's... I have a question I'd like to ask you. This is yes, George sir. in London. My question is this. My friend John Cheatham told me that when you went solo, you used to go on stage with somebody else, with another... Uh, uh, Herkimer Herkimer Scrubbles, a blonde-haired boy from uh, from uh, Philadelphia. What was Herkimer his name? Scrubbles. And uh, he's, he's still living in Philadelphia. What do you say? Her- Herkimer? Herkimer Scrubbles. <laughs> <laughs> Now that requires that was, that, you know, his name was Ronnie Gathers, but we, you know, he was a funny type what of guy, and we was trying to do uh, uh, like uh, Dean Martin, Dean Martin, uh, uh, what's what's the guy that got Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis type thing. 
Oh, okay. And 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 uh, <laughs> Herky would do all the dancing, and I'd be the straight man, and uh, we'd try to get some comedy also into the show, other than just how singing and dancing. We wanted everything. Together? How long did huh? you work together? How, how long, long did we you worked together? together? I think me and Herky were together for, I'd say, about five years. Yeah. About yeah, five maybe years. maybe six years. Because I left in 69, Mm -hmm. and Herky left me in, I think, it was 67. Yep. Okay. Uh Uh-huh. That's beautiful. Now, going back back to your your recording uh, of Human, that was a huge record on both sides of the record. That's that's another story, Lou. It's it's funny. It's a funny Mm -hmm. story. When I first went to Scepter Juan, and I told you that the woman didn't want any more male singers. Right. The guy that took me there, he said, I got two songs I want you to do, Tommy. He said, and then we'll think of some other songs as we go along. I said, okay. So he let me hear the A side, which was called Parade of Broken Hearts. Mm. I told him right then and there, and after I said, Luther, I said, this is not my style. I said, I, I said it's not me. I said, I like bigger songs. Mm. And he says, no, he said, Tommy, look, this is your first recording as a solo artist. What you do is listen to me. I know what a hit record <laughs> is. And he did. So okay. I said, I'm going to keep my mouth shut. Right. So then he brought me the second song, which was the B-side. It was called Human. Mm-hmm. When I heard that, that was the one I picked for myself. I okay. told him, I said, I like this song better than the, the A-side. I said, but you know what you're talking about. And I said, I ain't going to say nothing. <laughs> and I don't know if you remember a DJ in Jer- Jersey called Jocko. Yeah. But he oh, used, he used yeah, to be Jocko, one of the, he used to be one of the top, you know, uh, black, yeah. black uh, 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 DJs that put on shows at the Apollo Theater, too. Okay. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and uh, Jocko was playing the song one day, and what he did was he accidentally turned the record over and he put the wrong side on. He put human oh. on. Oh, And goodness. he said, ladies and gentlemen, here's Tommy Hunt's latest record, Parade of Broken Hearts. Tommy was formerly with the Flamingos and blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. And he put human on by mistake. And when he did it, the phone rang off the hook. I bet. <laughs> and then, then, wait a minute, and then Luther called me. Because I told him that I liked human. And he said, uh-huh. now human's nothing but a throwaway. I said, okay. <laughs> he called me. He said, Tommy, we got a hit. We got a hit. I said, pray to broken hearts. He said, hell no. He said, it's <laughs> human. I said, oh. So I didn't say nothing like I I didn't say I see. I told you so because I wanted him to have his own glory. Right, so I right, said, right. man, you really did a good job on that. How did you do that? Yeah, yeah. So he thought yeah. he thought he picked the song. Well, you 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 a better man than me because I'd have said, "Well, thank you, Mister Hitmaker." Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't want I didn't want to hurt his pride because in them days, you know, them guys had pride like as thick as glue. You know, when when yeah, they had their, yeah. you know, if you hurt their pride, you know what I mean? They would be mad for months. Yeah, after yeah, that. yeah. Yeah, yeah. And that was that 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 baby pride that they had, and I didn't want to hurt it. I just said, "Well, man, you picked a good song." Yeah, yeah. And he didn't even say, "Well, you did say human." I he didn't say nothing like that to me. He just took the glory and said, "Yeah, I I got a hit song." I said, "Well, right. you said you make hits." <laughs> so. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. After that, now, you know, no good songs, no good songs were coming in except one that that I another song I didn't like. And uh, um, what's my friend's name from London? Uh, George. George. Oh, you're Is talking George about John Cheatham. Yeah, he's still there. Oh, John Cheatham. Uh, do you do you remember the girl? Uh, uh, what's her name? Um, uh, the blonde singer. Um, Dusty Springfield. Who's saying I just don't know what to do with myself? Yeah, Dusty Springfield. That was my song. That was my yeah, favorite. Dusty Springfield. Yeah. That was that yeah. was the song that was written for me from Burt Backrack. Mm-hmm. That's that right? where she got the song from. She came she came to New York and heard heard me singing the song and the song was moving slowly up the the charts. 
and her agent told her, her manager told her that he wanted her to do the song. Hmm. Oh, what was her name? Dusty Springfield. That blonde girl. Dusty Springfield. Dusty, yeah, Dusty Springfield. And now, yep. now, did you yep. did you record that first? Yeah, I recorded it first. I've got an okay. LP with it on it. Okay. Yep. Well, I I, 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 I know uh, I've heard you singing it on on YouTube, and uh, and I tell you, I was talking to Rudy earlier. Uh, you and Chuck Jackson were, were right in that same mode in terms of the voice quality and sound, and, uh, and yeah, of course Chuck we, didn't a have lot a of dance people, moves. A lot, a lot of people kind of put us together, like uh, that we were the same type of singers. Mm-hmm. That we were, we all, we were almost alike. I think that's why the woman didn't want me on the label because me and Chuck are similar type singers. We we we're a little bit alike, and we look a little bit alike. Plus, we're both from Pittsburgh. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, Tommy, Tommy, uh, Tommy look, this, Chuck was there. This, Chuck was there first, you know, before me. So I just take my hat off to Chuck because he still calls me here. And we have little talks, you know, about the old days, how sharp he was on the stage and how sharp I was on the stage. I, of course, I don't, yeah. I don't like to talk about how sharp I was. I, you know, what I, mean? I prefer talking about. I could be raggedy as long as the show was good. There you go. There you go. Yeah. But, yeah, I you know, tell, I but I got to tell you, but I got to tell you, Mister Hunt, you, you were sharp. Okay. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. As a matter of. As a matter of fact, <laughs> look, look, say, <laughs> looking at the looking at the pictures today, you are still sharp. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> what pictures you got, Tommy? Tommy, this, Tommy, this is George. I want to ask you, uh, to <laughs> hey, George, to, you, to take you back to when you were about <laughs> twelve, thirteen, fourteen. What groups were you listening to? Which groups? What what groups did you were say? You which groups? You were like fourteen, fifteen, sixteen years old. Yeah, what groups were you listening which to group, back what, then? What groups was I listening to? Yes. Yeah. Is that what you said? Yes, it is. Yeah. Oh, uh, well, I can be quick on that. The Ink Spots, Mills Brothers, Delta Rhythm Boys, hmm. and then the gospel thing, the Five Blind Boys. Mm. Soul Starers, and then as it went on, it became like the Dominoes, the Orioles, the uh, the Five Satins, the Keys. You know, there's so many groups that were I loved. I loved the Moon Glows. Mm. You know, there was some. There were some good groups out there. Oh, a lot of them. That's right. That's right. And and, 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 you and know, I just think I just I don't know why I think that there's still room for that kind of music, still room out there. Yeah. I I'm listening to all the new music out there. Okay, I'm I'm from the past. Yeah. yeah. But I like music that's melodic, that's got a melody. Right. Got some words that you, and some words that you can understand. <laughs> Especially that. <laughs> Because it's, it's, it, it, that man's giving me white hair, man, trying to understand. <laughs> I, said that. I said, wait a minute. Wait. I said, what happened to the words? I'm telling you, man. It's yeah. Drive you up a wall. Well, well speaking of uh, of music today and your new project, what talk to me about that. What was uh, What is it all about? I don't, I really don't know. It was just something that I heard, and I said to myself, uh, I didn't even know I could write songs. I okay. started writing about 20 years ago when I was living in Amsterdam, Holland. I was doing a show there, and the guy in the band asked me, did I know how to put words together? And I said, not really. I never wrote a song in my life. Mm-hmm. And he said, why don't you try? And I said, because I don't have the patience for it. And he said, well, you you know, you don't have to do it. You know, don't try to force it all in one day. Do it every do a little bit every day. And I said, no. So my wife says, well, I can uh, write poetry. I said, well, then you go ahead and give it a shot. <laughs> so she started writing, and as she's writing, the nosiness of me 
right. started my my mind going, mm-hmm. and little words would come in my head because I'd be looking at what she's writing. I said, "Ooh, there's a word that could rhyme with that, or could sound good with that line." And I said, "Try this line. Try that line." Well, within ten minutes, fifteen minutes, we had a song. Hmm. How about and that? And that's when I said to her, I said, "You know what? I said, I think maybe maybe I can write." <laughs> I said, "I've never tried it." And I went home to the apartment that night, and I sat up all night long. She went to bed, and I sat up all night long, and I wrote about 30 songs in one night. Wow. wow. That's 30. awesome. And I said, where's it all come? And, and the, the names the names and the titles were just falling out of my head like, like cornflakes. Mm-hmm. I said, where's it all coming from? Hmm. But I, it's probably because when you get older, you got so many stories in you. Right, you don't right. know how many you got mm-hmm. until mm-hmm. you sit yeah, down and yeah. start writing about them. Yeah, so, yeah. So. But and, now and, I've and, got a, upstairs in my music room. I've got seven thousand sets of lyrics. Hmm. Mm. Seven thousand. Yeah, because I wrote wow. every single day for twenty years. Every single day I wrote so many songs, and now I got seven thousand. My wow. goodness! And ha- have you have you? Because all I wanted was a library. I I just wanted to see if I could make a library of songs. Mm-hmm. And if anybody wants them, you know what I mean. As far as I'm concerned, they can have them. I but like I just that. did it for for hobby's sake. You know what I mean. And this little song that I found, you know, I let a few people up north here hear it in the northern soul scene. I let mm-hmm. them hear it, and everybody's flipping over it over here in the northern soul, not in the the commercials uh, uh, right. uh, ball game, but, it, right. but in, in the northern soul, everybody's jumping on it. You know what I mean? And that? the northern soul still got a nice following. Yeah. For for sales of records, because that loving on the losing side that I did, I right. did the. Uh, the top of the pop, the TV show, the biggest TV show over here for entertainment. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I did that two or three times because of Northern Soul. So I've got a pretty good name over here, and, and thousands and thousands and thousands of people are really in my corner. That's wonderful. So that's I've, got wonderful. My own, I've got my own little following, and I'm happy. Yeah, that's great. Now, you said that you were not the vocals on that on that piece, who's doing no, the vocal? No, yeah, the the middle the middle part of the song is me. Okay. Where it's got that there little gimmick in the voice. Okay. <laughs> okay. But the, the other part of it is is a friend of mine who um, we just were sitting down in my in my living room and uh, set up his uh, recording studio and uh, we just mm-hmm. had a go and. Uh, it came out like that, and uh, I let a few people hear it, and everybody that heard it says, what a song, love it, love it, you know? Yeah, But yeah. there are people that love Northern Soul. Sure, sure. I, I don't imagine that uh, <laughs> the hip people of today that like all the rap and all the other stuff would even listen to it. Yeah. To well, be honest, but you never know. You never know. Well, I just say, other- you know, you the other wonderful thing about one of technology those songs. That's right. Well, the other wonderful thing about technology is you, you no longer have to worry about getting it to market. You you take it to market yourself because take, you, that, that well, that's what I'm learning. I'm yeah, cuz I don't know a thing about the computers. Yeah, well, and I, I mean, know just, that you got all all kind of ways now that you can sell your your records on computers now. That's that's exactly right, and uh, and and we're yeah. going to uh, make a special effort to, uh, to to get to London to see your your setup. I mean, that uh, to have seven thousand. No, that'd be that George, would be can you imagine that? Man. Huh? Can, that, George, I mean, that just yeah. blows, no, blows my mind. Seven thousand yeah. pieces that he's myself. written yeah. on himself. <laughs> yeah, wow. you know, they just. And I, I, I'm, I was going to put it on the computer some kind of way if people were, who were, wanted to be a writer and didn't know how to write could always buy mine and take right. mine and, you know, and they could make some money, I guess. I don't know. Well, the, the, both of you could make money. That's that's how easy things yeah. are right now. And, and, and I'll tell you, as we're beginning to wind down, uh, I, I'd like to also introduce something that uh, – simply comes out of my pastoral nature, and that's to try to always find out 
the yeah. impact of God in the life of those who've who've done so much and gone so far in life. Uh, ha- well, has, I can, has that been a part of your growth? I can tell you right now. I have asked myself now. I'm I'm eighty. I'm going on eighty two, right? Yes, sir. And people are looking at me, saying to me, "When are you going to get old?" <laughs> and I said, "What do you mean?" They said, "Tommy, you haven't changed from when you were forty." Mm-hmm. So, uh, to me, and I can look in the mirror at myself, and I haven't changed. Okay. And uh, I, uh, that's one miracle. And every time I think something's gonna go wrong, something goes right. How about that? I know there's a I know there's a supreme being. I know okay. that. He's he, he is in he's he lives in this house with me. How about that? I love this this person. Hmm. Whoever he is, mm-hmm. I know he's the boss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and uh, I don't have to look for I don't have to look for human managers anymore. I've got my manager in heaven. Yeah, all yeah. right. Yeah, that's beautiful, that's and that's who and I, that's who takes care of me. Yeah, yeah. Well, that that's beautiful. And I'm kind of like keep look keep keep him in your thoughts in your life, and believe me, he he's there. He's there yeah. for you. I don't yeah. care what anybody says. That's I know I've seen it happen. Yeah. Too many things that happened for me that I thought I was going to go down the drain and probably be on the streets, uh, uh, living on the streets. Hmm. And for some reason, things just changed, just kept hmm. changing, kept changing. Yeah. And I said, well, there's a lot of people younger than me that are living on the streets that have been in show business. I'm still out here working as much as I ever worked. Hmm. And people say, one guy came up to me the other night in Scotland and says, Tommy, he said, I just want to tell you one thing. He said, you're 82, man, he said, and your voice is stronger now than it was when you were 30 or 40, 50. Hmm. Yeah. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. And I've seen some of the old guys from from the past singing, Hmm. and their voices are gone, half of them. Yeah, yeah. Because well, you're not special. taking care of yourself. Sure, sure. You well, see what special. I do, you know what it is, Lou? Yes, sir. I'm when I'm at home. When I'm at home, I never go out. Never. Okay. It, you can call me a recluse. I <laughs> okay. never go out because there's nothing in the streets mm. I want except to go out and do my shows. I see. When I I'm see. off, when I'm off the stage, I come home. And I'm happy being here in the house every single day. Okay. Hmm. I'm I'm very happy. I'm complete. Yeah. I found well, happiness. Beautiful. That's beautiful. Well, I, I uh, and I hope everybody else finds it too. Indeed, indeed. Well, I certainly appreciate you sharing that with us, and and I'm kind of like Paul when he was uh, standing before the Greeks, letting them know. Well, that, don't, uh, don't let this that, be the don't let this be the end of a, a, a lovely friendship. Oh, absolutely not! No, it because won't be I've got your number now, and, and me, I, I'll get on this phone and call in a minute. That, that's great. That's great. That's wonderful. I'll and, be and, like a monkey on your back. All right. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. <laughs> and, and, okay. and the uh, just, just to finish that comment, Paul was telling the Greek. He said, "You know, that you, you're worshiping all of these guys that got names, and then you got that one over there that that has." an unknown God that you're worshiping because they want to cover all the bases. Well, I can put a That's name right. on it, and the name that goes on that is Jesus. And so I, I fully understand what you're saying. Whatever that uh, thing that has been protecting you has uh, has really held it all together for you. And, and to, hear you acknowledge that, to hear you acknowledge that fact means so, so very much to me. And I just want to let you know that uh, that I love you, and I know the other guys feel the same way. I love way. all you guys. In fact, Rudy yeah. and George, you you probably want to say a, a, something for to Mister Mister Hunt. Go right ahead, uh, Mister Hunt. I just want to tell you, thank you for the inspiration because as a young man coming up, I can truly say I was still my record player and listen to the flamingos and learn how to sing first tenor because I became a first tenor. I've never met anybody. Uh, in my era, 
who like like thanks for lot. you who, who inspired you. me. I want to thank you for the inspiration. Thank I you very love much, you, man. Love mm-hmm. you too, bro. Thank you very very much. And Mr. Hunt, and can you uh, can you can you give some parting words to our listening audience? Well, to all of those out there that remember me, I'd like to say my love is still strong for you, and um, I hope God takes care of you and looks after you. For those who who never met me, maybe God will give us a chance to meet somewhere along the way. And thank you for being a part of my life. Thank you for supporting me. <laughs> and thank you for being you. All God right. bless That's... you all. I love you. That's wonderful. Okay, Mr. Hunt. Well, listen, we just thank you once again on behalf of all of the conductors for and the listening audience for spending this time Great. with us. And uh, I want you to know, as we always end our conversations, that uh, that we love you. And I'll be praying that God continues to keep his hands on you and your life. Thank and you. We just, we're just prayerful that you'll continue to be blessed, my brother. And thank you, Lou, for yes, sir. For thinking about me and pulling me into your life. Thank you very much. All right, Mr. Hunt. Well, listen, you have a wonderful evening. And, okay, and give my then best, you too. And give my best to Mandy. All righty. Great. All, all, <laughs> all right, righty. Sir. I'll do that. All right. Bye-bye. All right. Bye-bye. All right. Now. Okay, guys, what do you think? Uh, what a What a wonderful end to this particular journey, isn't it? I mean, just to yeah, just just to have him be so so fluid and and open about uh, about his life, and that seven thousand songs on the shelf, man, it blew, that's blew amazing, me. Man. That's, that's <laughs> amazing. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely amazing. Now, before we go though, uh, let me just ask you guys: Do you, either one of you have another funny that you can share? Uh, no, I got a knockout joke. Oh, okay. Let's hear it. Yeah. All right. It goes like this. Knock, knock. Who's that? Let us. Let us. Let us. Let us in. It's freezing out here. (laughs) (laughs) I think that's enough. Okay. The conductor is telling us it's time to move on. We hope you've enjoyed the show. Let us know by sending an email to info at cleoexchange-express.com. That's info at cleoexchange-express.com. Until next time, we wish you peace of mind, love from the heart, and happiness you cannot explain. <laughs>